the look. only one of us who's not a Taurus, Gemini, or Scorpio. Okay, we're live on Facebook. <laughs> we're recording. We're wishing happy birthdays to everybody. Andrea's was yesterday. Happy happy birthday yesterday, Andrea. Thank you. Beautiful flowers. And Julia's is next week, turning, I think, a big number. We won't say what it is. I don't care. I mean, it's big 4-0. Um, I'm sorry, but you are a child. I think they I have, chil I think I have children. Longer, I think I have longer. children close to that age. Just saying. I think all of you met me when I was 22. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, <laughs> I love it. All right, we'll I'm, sink in. I'm not looking quite as well as I did last time when testing positive with COVID. This thing kicked my butt. I'm still like. Um, but I'm going to do my best to be here for you today. Amanda is not here today. She is, um, she said it was okay to say she's doing a, a, a peaceful protest today. So, um, oh, okay. so she's going to be, uh, she's off all social media, off everything today. So we respect her for that. And I will, um, so I'm stuck doing the tech today. So all of it so if i get a glazed look on my face or if i'm a little late coming back in on a response <laughs> y'all all know why it's nothing personal <clears throat> nothing personal nothing new um just you know <laughs> just me being me here so with that um since we have such a full house today i'm going to get us going right away so i think it's going to go steve julia gabe andrea tom unless one of you turn your camera off and then that'll screw me all up but we'll just keep it <laughs> keep it all this way for now so Steve, don't tempt us. Don't tempt us to keep turning our camera. Oh on my God. With, with how dizzy I am, I swear <laughs> to God, my eyes already feel like they're doing that, you know, jack, jack box thing or whatever you call yeah. it. Anyways. Now I see, I just want to apologize too, because my camera is in a different place than my, my big screen. And so I'm kind of looking all, you know, you're looking off in the distance. Yeah. Like so you're talking to yeah, looking off into the middle distance and like, you know, and I'm sorry about that, but that's all right. It's all good. At least, at least you're here giving us some good rec. So we're all good with that. Okay, Steve, take us away. All right. I am going to do something I have never done in the history of tea with a bookseller, and that is talk about three cookbooks. I have cook cook my specialty at all, or even talking about them, but we have three good ones. So okay. they're good, they're all great gifts for the season. So I'm going to talk about them today. And I'm going to start with Nancy Silverton's The Cookie That Changed My Life and more than 100 other classic cakes, cookies, muffins, and pies that will change yours. I've got it too. Nancy Silverton. She's especially in L.A. She's uh, uh, LA, uh, the L.A. Bakery and Campanile and Alza and so many restaurants is Nancy Silverton. But bake is where she started uh, started with uh, for Wolfgang Puck as his uh, doing his desserts for his restaurant so I heard her on the radio this weekend and she was inspired to do this uh, this cookie that changed her life which is a, a peanut butter cookie she was uh, there it is that's her peanut butter cookie, but she was at another bakery and she had somebody else's peanut butter cookie and it was the best she'd ever had. <laughs> so she said, she said, I'm really competitive. I had to top that. And uh, she's not guaranteeing this tops that, but it probably does. So these are like the very best of the best of, of her recipes. Um, here is a yum yum coffee cake. I will never say no to a coffee cake. Oh, there's so many good things in here. I think she's got her own granola in here. She's got, uh, what are these? Uh, an apple upside down cake. You name it, uh, pies, um, muffins, cookies, everything you want. And they're in this, here's some cupcakes. Anyway, this book has been really hot this last few weeks. Um, and I hope you, I can't remember the stock you have over at Warwick's, but uh, grab them while you can, because they probably won't be able to reorder uh, many right now. Yeah, so, no, I, I know, because I know that like Kim loves it. I know there's a lot of people that love it and it, it's a, it's just looks like it's a really great gift book. So not just for yourself. Great. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a great, yeah, get one for yourself and, and get one for a friend. You're not going to believe this, but this is, this is the cookie that changed her life that Anne made over the weekend because she had heard, heard her on the radio. And I almost ate this before tea time, but I'm glad I didn't because here it is. And it's, I can vouch for them. Fantastic, amazing. Now this is just one, the, the cookie, that, the, the recipe that changed her life, right? But then there's all the others, but isn't that crazy? That's hilarious. This is the best thing that's happened for me on TV, probably <laughs> did, ever. Did you guys like call up and coordinate beforehand? <laughs> no. I mean, I, it, w- it, would not have happened this, it would not have happened this smoothly if they tried to coordinate it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I heard the cookie that changed my life. I thought, I have one in the kitchen. I'll be right back. <laughs> that's Fantastic. This is T this is live TV, people. <laughs> I love it. All right. I'm having some serious difficulty dealing with what's going on on Facebook. So I may get the books over there. Um bear with me, everybody. Um, because it's got like two different things going on. So, anyways, it'll all work out just fine. You can do it late. You can do it late. You can add them later. Yeah. I'll and be, listen, you know, it's gonna be on um you post it later. Right. You know, online. So and we do the newsletter tomorrow. So we go all get lots of love, but I'll try and make it work. So all right, Julia, what do you got for us? Well, will you give me um access to share? Oh, but also yeah, but also Tom, I was gonna say if you hadn't already married Anne, I would tell you to marry her that she just made you those cookies. Like my God. You are so right. (laughs) Yeah. Thank God I already did. Yeah, (laughs) smart, smart. Um, okay, mine is um you know her you may or may not love her but um she has uh this book out liz cheney oath and honor um you've probably seen her she's been on every Mm -hmm. single um news program that exists um she's been on uh all of the she was on today's show she's been on all of the big um outlets she was interviewed on npr um, and we are uh, catching up with this book. Um, we've gotten multiple print runs coming in this week. Um, so Warwick's, I know, has some on order um, that will get there. If they don't get there at the end of this week, they'll get there at the beginning of next week. So in time for um, Christmas uh, and um, for holiday shopping. Um, but this one is a big one. Um, she's going to continue doing press. Um, And it is all about sort of her, um, you know, taking over the January 6th committee and the decisions that she made that sort of made her um, persona non grata with Donald Trump um, and his cohort. So, uh, you know, whether whatever you feel about Liz Cheney, I think this is an important book for um, looking at sort of how we're maybe trying to move forward or move past um, what happened on January 6th, particularly, but also in the Trump years. So, um, yeah. Uh, and, and like I said, it's, um, it kind of took us all by surprise. So, um, you know, the, just how big it's been. Um, so I know that there are books on order at Warwick's and there are more coming. So, well, and I think it's one of those things, I think it's very, really good to, I mean, even if you don't completely agree with everything that she stands for, I think it's still good to read sometimes a from people's from other it helps you put where you it's like no this is why i really don't agree with her this is why i really do agree with her with this stuff i mean i think everybody's got some nuances to them good and bad sure hopefully most absolutely people do, you know so and absolutely the reviews have been pretty good from what i've seen yeah it's a i mean it's definitely like a book that grapples with things um yeah. and sort of you know talks through her process of grappling with things and with her party and you know this party that sure her, her name is so aligned with right right and, you know so right. okay. can Thank i you. can i say my favorite anecdote that i've heard i won't have this exactly right it's more of a nancy pelosi story than a liz cheney but it's in the liz cheney book when, when nancy pelosi was going to choose her which a republican to run the committee right her staff was worried and they came up to her like these are all the things she said about you these like and nancy pelosi was looked at it she's like why are you showing me things that don't matter? And she throws it, you know, basically throws it aside because she has her eyes on bigger game than petty things that have been, I mean, she's heard it all, Nancy Pelosi. So right. I love that story. I do too. And I think that s- speaks a lot to, I mean, we have a lot to talk about and we could go down this rabbit hole all day, but it goes to the, um, 
where politics isn't about the bigger picture. It's about all this petty stuff. And that's that's the sound bites that everybody's going after, you know, um, to get the clicks and the views. So I'm sorry I'm like sweating. <laughs> it's like I'm a mess today. Anyways, okay, Gabe. Save me, Gabe. Is that me? <laughs> it's you. Once again, I gotta step into the fray. There you go. <laughs> Pull you out of the fire. Pull so my first fire. book I'm talking about is Curepedia out tomorrow. Somebody asked me the other day, the cure, who cares about the cure? And I'm like, what, what? is a wrong with you with some expletives and superlatives? Do you still English? talk to them? I'm married to her. so oh. yeah. <laughs> um, But she's not a fan of the Smiths either. I don't get it. Uh, but, uh, you know, the cure is uh, they, they are on a 40 year and counting trajectory. They had sellout tours earlier this year. Uh, all across the world, not just across the country. Um, it is Robert Smith and Company covered from day one. It's a big, fat, I haven't got my copy yet, but it's a nice, big, fat, thick, gifty uh, book. And, you know, they really, I, like everybody I knew had Cure the B-Sides. I mean, everybody had some Cure, at least, at least that Cure album. Um, everybody listens to the cure. I was selling this around people. Were, oh, I'm, I'm excited that booksellers who are a little skeptical and, uh, a, a lot of them are, are pretty young these days. They're not all holsters. And the, I mean, after a 40 year career, uh, the cure is not very particularly young either. They ain't the stones, but, uh, they are, um, so they're definitely relevant and I think they'd absolutely have fans. So I'm excited to share this. This is a really late Christmas uh, uh, throw out there. You'll see it on the table. Uh, and I think there's just good things covered. Uh, photographs throughout, uh, oversized. It's got this great color palette throughout. Um, and uh, the end papers, it's all black and white basically. And then the end papers uh, are in full color. Um, Andy Bella. Um, a longtime Cure collaborator did those for uh, for us. So it's a really great looking package. It's a great gift item. And there will be some tomorrow morning on the table at Warwick's. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, that is that is a fantastic gift book. No question. For uh, Okay, totally different band. But did you all see, because it was on every social media thing I watched over the weekend, the Shane McGowan funeral? Did you all watch that? Oh my that? God. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. it was stunning. Yeah. yeah. Well, you... my um my favorite uh, musician in all the world, the dark poet of our times, Nick Cave. Yes. Uh, performed a song. So yes. yeah, they were buds. They yeah, and it was honest to God, do yourself a favor, just just mm -hmm. Google Shane McGowan funeral and watch it, and just it was beautiful. It was Nick, just great songwriter. One of the oh, best. He was, and it was just a tribute to somebody's life that, and yeah, I mean, just the music, it was just incredible. So do yourself a favor on that. Not and and buy Gabe's book about the cure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was very moving when everybody started singing. I uh, yeah, I saw some of the songs. It was oh, uh, and the dancing and the uh, I mean, it was just gorgeous. It was just gorgeous. So, all right, Andrea. And I'm not good like Amanda would have found it on YouTube and put the link on Facebook and all that good stuff. <laughs> I'm leaving it up to you all to be able to figure that out. <laughs> um, so the first book I want to talk about is a gift book for um, the person in your life who is um, into military history. Everybody knows somebody on their gift, gift list who would like that. A book like this. This is uh, The Savage Storm, The Battle of Italy, 1943 by James uh, Holland, who really is... Um, you know, like he steps into um, the same school as Max Hastings and Stephen Ambrose. I mean, he is that good and he is just the inheritor of that kind of mantle in military history. Um, this is out tomorrow and this is um, just his new book is uh, it recasts the controversial um, Italian campaign in 1943 and um, sets a new standard in the chronicling of the war really by doing that. And um, basically before the invasion of France in 44, um, the allied armies went into um, Sicily and quickly um, won there. And then they thought, okay, we're just gonna push up and liberate Rome. And even though the um, 
Italians pretty much uh, rolled over and surrendered. Um, the Germans were having none of that. And so this campaign um, really turned into a serious miasma and uh, became one of the um, hardest and longest fought uh, battles of the war. Um, and so there's a new reckoning out um, from James Holland. And um, I think that anybody on your list that loves military history or, you know, anything having to do with um, like Europe and uh, those uh, harrowing years that that decade um, will love this. Like I said, it's out tomorrow. It's $32. $32 hardcover and it's 480 pages and it's got, as you can see, um, lots of photos. So, wow. um, yeah, these, uh, yeah, I mean, the photos are really pretty amazing. Yeah. So, um, that's it. The Savage Storm. I love it. And he wrote Brothers in Arms, it said there. I, I missed that the first yeah. part. So, yeah. So, definitely knows what he's, knows how to write a book that is compelling for people to want to read and not just like bunch of facts and things it's yeah, he's a no. compelling storyteller yeah he really is he's a great narrative historian yeah um okay hold on a second because we have some comments coming in so kim who reads lots of books on here uh she just finished and loved democracy awakening tom i believe oh, that's excellent. yours yeah um d also read this the square of sevens is that anybody's on here no mm -mm. okay um never heard of it so i'm gonna have to look that one up because d's saying it she really liked it too and it didn't get a lot of press so i've got to write that one down and empire of wild whoever's that one is so i'm not sure who does that one either all right tom what are you going to talk to us about today i'm going to take you back to ireland oh, i love ireland. it <clears throat> so i missed last week but if i'd been here last week i would have talked about louise kennedy's collection of stories the end of the world is a cul-de-sac which is um just out and great to have something brand new in the first week of December. We have a, I have a couple of brand new books that are kind of exciting. So it's great to have new books to talk about and to, to share. And as we all know, love Louise Kennedy. Trespasses was probably my favorite, was my favorite book of last year. And what's fascinating about her in the publishing sense is in the UK, they published the stories first and then Trespasses. And that made her name through these stories. We went the other direction. We published the novel first and now the stories. But um, but it's great because we I mean she won prizes for these stories. Um, and they are they they remind me so much. I mean, now Grant, now I'll I'll say they are not happy stories. They are in most cases dark and one might say bleak stories about mostly Irish women, but not entirely Irish women, but yes, mostly Irish women, but they are beautiful. And what I love and what I, I want to compare her to Alice Munro because they pack so much novelistic detail into a sentence and into a story that you feel like you're getting a much, you know, you're getting a novel, but in 10, 20, 30 pages. Um, she's, uh, she's one of the, my very favorite writers. I also love that her story is so great because she was uh, she worked in, she was a, a chef and she worked in the, in the food world for decades before she, I mean, she'd been working on her writing, but she really, she's at midlife. She's now bloomed into one of our greatest international writers. So um, it's just been published to great reviews. Boston Globe says um, the world might, might well end in a cul-de-sac, but endings in this collection yield the beginnings of insight, awareness, and spiky wry humor. That's the other thing. She's funny. Yes. Yeah in a really, you know, Irish, dark Irish way. Um, and she's unsentimental. She's um, just so real. Um, so collection of stories, always fun to to uh, talk about a collection, a collection like this. The end of the world is a cul-de-sac. I know, and I feel horrible because I still have not gotten to that. And I adore oh, her as a writer. Yeah, I mean, I really so do. And I just, yeah. I just, it's, there's just so many good books. Yeah, but we, we've talked about here too, though. It's fun to read. You can read them. You don't have to read the whole thing all at once. Right. You can read them periodically, you know, which is yeah. another great way to do it. But yeah. it maybe the best way because they're not, there are very few, it's not, they're funny, but not funny. It's right. hard to read them all in a row because they're intense. Yeah. I mean, and that's, 
yeah it would be like if you were like somebody on here d has on here andrea just read the claire keegan that's a tough read it would be like reading claire keegan back to back to back to back yes you yes, know yes, it's exactly. just like that yeah you, they're so amazing but it's like yeah you have to absorb them a little bit exactly yep okay steve what's your next cookbook my next cookbook is the cali baja cookbook okay so if ever there was a san diego area cookbook this is the one and it's by michael uh gardner it's published by rizzoli so you know the quality is going to be uh a plus and um it's the cuisine of the baja borderlands and uh, he, he there's something i like that he wrote in the introduction and he says there's a line between northern baja and southern california from the northern side, it's called the border. From the southern side, it's called La Frontera. Mm. I probably mispronounced that. But the fish don't care about that line. Neither does the climate and neither does the soil. Nature knows no such borders and it seems neither does food. So this is like just from the region, you know, the best stuff, the best ingredients. I highlighted a few things here that look good to me. This is a cilantro and spinach soup. There you go. Ooh, Ooh that sounds good. <laughs> uh, crab burritos. Sign me up. Yeah, that sounds good. Too close to dinner time, man. Too close to dinner time. No kidding. Yeah. Um, this is going to, oh, I can't pronounce anything. Tomato, tomato. Tomato. tomato tomato i said tomato i can't believe it <laughs> <laughs> tomato yes. tomato and real del the one word i should be able to pronounce i i messed up tomato and real del castillo queso fundido oh, queso fundido is the yeah, best love me some melted cheese man love me some melted cheese sign me up so that's just a few things I, I, I just You're think this is wrong. really cool and great for the area so really good for the area um yeah. and i'm assuming that we have it highlighted on kim's wall because that's a that's a no-brainer on the wall at warwick's absolutely <clears throat> yep okay where are you going gabe i think you're next aren't, aren't you oh no, no julia I'm no next. julia oh i'm Steve, sorry you turned your camera off i accidentally hit my camera button i it was an accident i promise <laughs> I'm so See, sorry. I'm, my brain, my fault. I know. You tested me I know. and I failed. And I Keep failed. Up, I was dude. trying so hard to uh, mess anything up. And I just, uh, totally I messed, just up. messed up too. Okay. <laughs> sorry. It's me. <laughs> but I have a, I have a cookbook. It's a backlist cookbook. It came out in 2021. <laughs> but I just found this when I was looking through some backlist. I'm, you know, I'm still kind of new and learning some of the backlist. <laughs> um, and so, um, I found this that was like <laughs> hit every part of my um, favorite things in the world, which is the magic of tinned fish. And I don't know if you guys have been seeing at restaurants a lot more, there's, you can order a lot of tinned fish. Now there are these great um, sort of tinned fish um, <clears throat> that you buy. It's like these great companies making this like amazing tinned fish of all kinds. So this one, um, you know, it's, it's a cookbook that both uses it in like sort of bigger cook. Um, so whether you're using it, you know, to to make anchovy butter for a ribeye steak or something like that, um, but then also talks about sort of using it um, as in your appetizers and sort of in these kind of um, fun. There's there's a pincho um, recipe which is um, the Basque sort of small bites um, that's in there. I don't know. It's just really fun. There's a place in North Hollywood called Epicure that like sells all this like fancy tinned fish that I found. And I'm sure there's one in San Diego too that like will sell it all to you. Um, but um, anyway, I just think the fun cookbook, it's kind of a small size. Actually sitting right next to me, I can show you. Um, it's like a smaller size. It's not like a big fat cookbook and it's kind of thin. Um, but I think just like a really fun gift. So it's definitely orderable through Warwick's. Um, it was a New York Times cookbook of the year in 2021. Um, but um, one that I missed and I usually have my eye on things like this. So um, 
Yeah. It it is the I mean, I'm I'm an old lady, so I'm going to use the wrong words on this, but it is like the cool hip and trendy thing to do now is tin fish. So it's like if you yeah. have a if you have a 30, 40 something in your life, buy them this book as a gift because you'll be like the cool aunt that knows <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> Yeah. It was all the totally. way in Spain. Yeah, when we were there, it was uh, everywhere. I mean, I think they're kind of like the kings of. Uh, it's I, I wasn't really like that familiar with. I mean, I I grew up with tin fish. Right, right. Time. But that. But I'm Star going back to Gabe when we had it. It was like not cool. To, it was just like that. Was and it wasn't very had. good. But yeah. I mean, these things are covered. Uh, some of the stuff we had in Spain was like that's tin. That's tin stuff. I mean, yeah. it's like it's got a whole. There's a. I can't remember if I what I was watching, but it was obviously one of the the food networks. But there's there was a whole documentary on just like the you know these small companies that are just very. Um, you know how they're how they're putting it together. It's it's amazing. So I have yeah. no words. My brain is scrambled right now. So <laughs> you're great. You're doing <laughs> great. Scrambled brains. But anyways, yes, it's totally yes. Thank you, Kim. She says tinfish is totally riz. <laughs> <laughs> that will that will age me. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Um, I've lost track of who's up. I think it's Gabe. Gabe up. Gabe up. And, um. I says I'm uh from here on then to the end to the lightning round, it's all favorite stuff I've talked about before. Okay. Um, a fellow who always I think gets short shrift from reviewers and sales who writes a really good page turning thriller and always a different book, uh, is Lou Burney. So the new book is Dark Side, uh The Dark Ride came out in um in September, so it's been out there a while. Uh you know, it's just someone I have to talk about because if you want to surprise somebody with a good read of somebody they've never read before, they'll thank you and they'll go out and pick up some the older Lou Bernie titles out there in paperback. Um, uh, you know, when you when you get turned on to an author that's really good, uh, people appreciate it. So I think he's a really good hand sell for an independent bookseller. He's a really good uh, recommend. We got to start a weekly uh, a publisher's weekly start review for this book. Uh, quotes from people like Don Winslow. Um. Uh. Who else? S. A. Crosby, Lisa Unger, T. J. Newman. So, um, people do like uh Lou Bernie. Um, uh, the protagonist uh, is a twenty-one-year-old uh amusement park worker. Hardly read or hardly read. Not much ambition. Not much of anything. Likes to get stoned. Likes to chill. Got his broke ass job that he goes to every day. And one day he meets these two kids sitting on, on the bench unattended and he is concerned and goes up to them and he sees that they've been bodily injured uh, by whoever's been taking care of them, obviously. So he, you know, the kids move on, but the kids never leave his mind. And he sets, uh, gets on investigating and trying to see what's actually wrong and see if he could help these kids. And of course he's a complete mess, 21 years old, got no life experience, not a very bright kid. Um, but well-intentioned. So he's kind of screws it up early on, but he finds a support system and he starts learning the system and gets smart about things and uh, tries to help these kids out and uh, comes to find out that their father is not only a lawyer, but he's also a high price lawyer, but he's also a kingpin of a uh, drug cartel. So um, he's not a nice guy, uh, but he pits his wits against the mobs and uh, we'll see who wins. But just a lot of fun. I love it. And I do love Blue Bernie. Nicest guy on the face of the planet. We really nice man. Here, I'm going to take us off of screen share. Hold I'm on. sorry. That's all right. You got it? or Okay. I there guess. You go. um, super nice guy. We had him for November Road. And I saw, you can you can Google this too, because I'm not doing it for you. Um, He was on CBS. Uh, they did a, a, a thing on him for CBS Sunday Morning on Blue Bernie. Wow. Or, um, which I thought was awesome. Um, and I think they might have done it around because of November Road, um, around the 60th anniversary of um, Kennedy, yeah. Kennedy assassination. Um, but that was it, a pretty good book. That uh, November Road was a pretty good book. I, and Beth Doherty wants to know if you gave a spoiler or there in there anywhere in what you're talking well, about. I, I left it open. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see who wins. Let's see who wins there. And then I think this is your book, Andrea, because you're up next, I think, if I've got the order going correctly. Maybe yep. not. Um, but Beth, who's on here, too, who we love, is she's been thoroughly enjoying the colors of life, all those stunning photos. So love that you got that one. That was your book, wasn't it, Andrea? No, 
but um oh yes 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 the colors of life yes yeah. all right i'm Please, sorry Ooh, yeah um all of those really i'm so glad beth that you um picked that book up it's amazing and um i just it's just this beautiful window into the past yep. through these uh those cool color old color plate photographs and everything yeah sorry i forgot um I just spaced on the... Well, the and I spaced on Amanda talking about that other one. So we're in good company. All right, 101 Ways to Read a Book. Yes. Um, this was chosen by the New York Times as a top holiday book for children. So we're very happy about that. Um, and we agreed from day one when we were just reading the um, the uh, manuscript back in the day. Um, this is really something special here. We kind of think that it's a classic, a modern classic in the making. It's for any book um, lover, although, um, uh, you know, it's also a children's book around age six and up. Um, it's there's beautiful and whimsical um, illustrations throughout. Um, and it makes this book not only a celebration of a reading, um, but it's also an interest it, eh, inspiration to um, discover new ways to read and to decide what to read, um, which, so it's working on a lot of different levels and, um, we love it. And, um, indie booksellers across the land, including Warwick's who has a stack of this at the store, um, has, you know, really gotten behind this book, um, as well as the New York times. And that's, um, $20 hardcover, hardcover, um, paper over board. So it's unjacketed and it look, it's really nice and gifty that way. And it's yeah. 100 128 pages so that's a darn good uh value there at $20 hardcover no kidding great gift book yeah excellent gift book especially that's that could also be one that you give to like a parent friend you know exactly yeah anybody yep. anybody who's into books uh collect adult collectors of children's books will love this yep so okay tom all right. So my next book is The Wildest Son by Asha Lemmy, out in hardcover last, again, the new brand new book out last Tuesday. So she's the author of 50 Words for Rain, which became a oh, Good Morning yeah. America pick. And so she had a bestseller. It was a New York Times bestseller right out of the gate. Um, and she's back. Pre it's been a couple of years, I think, since that book. But mm -hmm. this will definitely, if you read 50 Words for Rain, I think you really enjoy the new book. Also, that was historical and coming of age. This is also a historical novel, but also a coming of age novel. This one takes you from Paris. Like there's a, the main character is a, an aspiring writer. She's always been told by her mother that her father, who she doesn't know, may have been, was Ernest Hemingway. And so the book is sort of about uh, Hemingway looms in the background always as she's trying to as, she, as, as the story takes her from Paris to Harlem. Uh, so Paris after World War II, um, just after World War II to Harlem, and then Cuba, and then Florida, closer and closer to Hemingway. Um, but it's not really about Hemingway. It's about the growth and the, you know, as I say, coming of age of this woman. But Hemingway is definitely, I love anything to do with Hemingway and the lost generation. So there's a lot in here of that. But it's just a really kind of satisfying commercial read the much much different than the louise kennedy kennedy this you can just devour you don't have to take your time with um it'll be a great if you love the paris wife or um the girl with a louding voice which we published which is all any those are kind of book club picks this is this is for you so the wildest son out for the holidays in hardcover love it who's the who's the um publisher on that one is that That's dutton. dutton it's dutton yeah yeah okay yeah. yeah all right i think we're at lightning round Really? Okay, I guess I'm up again. You're um, up again, Steve. What about your, about your third cookbook? My third cookbook is a classic. It's, oh, let me get this right. Bad glare right now. Bad glare. Let's see. I can't mm, get it. No. I'm going to have to just say what it is. All right. It's Julia Child's Chef Cookbook. So it was published. It's all the recipes, or not all of them, but all recipes from the show, the classic show in the what, 60s and 70s? So it's never been in hardcover. This is the first time it's ever been in hardcover. And um, Julia Child never goes out of fashion. Um, there's always interest in her. 
there's the they have that recent series uh, uh, that's been pretty well acclaimed and loved by a lot of people. I can't remember what network it's on or or streaming. HBO. Um, HBO. Thank you, Julia. Julia for Julia. And oh, there we have it. Look at that. Nice. I can do tech when I want to. <laughs> you are awesome. And for Julia, anything. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I wanted people to see it. It's a beautiful cookbook. It is, and it's got all of her uh, the original hand drawings by her husband Paul. So it's it's charming. It's a beautiful a beautiful gift. It is, and, and that's why I wanted to put it on there because I was like, Thank "That's you. a that's Thank a pretty you. one. I got to make sure I get that one." And I I only did it because <laughs> never mind. I won't tell you. It's like it was purely accidental, but. <laughs> So I wonder why it was never in hardcover before. It just I, I don't seemed... know. I guess whoever, you know, published it at the time thought it would be sell better as a trade paperback right. and then they just kept it in that format. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, Julia? All right. My last one is a really fun kids book called Marion Hark a Christmas Story. I thought going into um you know, next week, the last week before Christmas. This is just a fun one. Um, and it's just this very cute story about this owl who um, follows his tree into the city when it oh. gets used as a Christmas tree and then goes back to the forest to, to nest in another Christmas tree for the next year. Um, it's just a lovely book. I thought it would be a nice book to read with kids on Christmas Eve, maybe, um, and just one to sort of sit with if if you have kids in your life and you're um you know hanging out with them for christmas um it might be a good one to read together i love that it's really cute it's been doing really really well for us um and people have really been loving it so um yeah it's called mary and hark and i think i mean people love owls and i mean and you don't think <laughs> about it it's like those trees because that's those are their homes and they like <laughs> i know i <laughs> At first, I was like, is this too sad? And then it's actually like a really joyful, lovely book. Um, okay. Yes. Because until you so said it's, that, it's I really promise. didn't think about the poor owls. <laughs> Humbug. <laughs> you left the owl on the street. I know. Um, I have a, a, a owl story. When we did, when I worked at Barnes & Noble, we did the midnight release party of, of um, Harry Potter. My daughter came with me and she was a huge Harry Potter fan. So we're driving home at like two in the morning and we're stopped, you know, the intersection gate, but we're in El Camino Real and Lucadia and we're stopped at the stoplight and this giant white owl comes directly at us across the thing. And we both just stopped and looked at each other because we wanted to make sure that each other saw it. And it's because it was just like, it was incredible. It was like, okay, how weird was that? It was Hedwig. It was Hedwig. It was, it was, it was, but thank God we had a witness for each other because nobody would have believed it if we hadn't, <laughs> but we love owls. They're poor little trees. All right. I've lost track of who's up next. I think it's Andrea. No? Gabe. 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 See? Right. We're just throwing up our hands, Julie. It's mayhem. It's here. mayhem. It is just chaos. Oh, it's chaos, uh, I tell you. Book I previously previously talked about, but I think it's a good reminder for uh, the holiday for having trouble finding something for somebody. Uh, as I mentioned, probably the last time I saw, I talked about this book, uh, you can always it seems like you can always write a book on the Roman Empire, uh, World War II, and the Tudors. And Henry VIII. The there's plenty of Tudor books out there. Henry the Eighth. Henry the Seventh, a lot of Elizabethan stuff. Um, so you're like, okay, here's another one. So I'll just read it, and it's whatever, and you'll read read what you've read before. I don't know how we can continue to do this, uh, but John Guy and Julia Fox are really, really um, strong academics, big researchers, and really strong researchers. And they went and dug around for a bunch of years, ten years, eight to ten years, or something like that, working on this thing. And uh, did a lot of really eye-opening uh, research and finding documents. And what they came up with is a completely different relationship of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. Uh, yes, there was the divorce issue, um, but um, the uh, a, a lot of the um, onus has been placed on Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn uh, cheated on Henry. And all the all, you know all the stuff that we pretty know is probably made up. Uh, they come out and and uh, and and show us how all all this uh, anti 
uh, and uh, feeling was generated via propaganda and stuff. But the the crux of it's really, but it really focuses on their relationship together and working in concert as uh, two monarchs and Henry often taking Anne's advice uh, when his male advisors, because everybody else was male, uh, his advisors were telling him uh, to do something different. So he he went to her a lot. They weren't exactly co-regents, but she did influence uh, policies and it did, did influence um, a lot of uh, what was going on in um, in England of that day. And um, she is not the uh, uh, underhanded vixen that she's uh, painted as. She's not uh, a bad person uh, and she's not a powerless person. She did uh, wield a lot of power just after a certain point, that's all you can do. But uh, a real eye-opening kind of a book that will have a lot of new, interesting little factoids that you've never even considered or thought about. Um, and then other stuff that you kind of thought, I knew it. You, you know, That's exactly what I thought. So We read it in, in parallel with, um, oh, Hilary Mantel. Just read all that stuff together. <laughs> you know? <laughs> she is. <laughs> I, love, I love that. All right. Let's see. We've got Andrea next. Okay, right so this, um, this is my second kid's book, mm -hmm. and um, this is so great, Mary Whatmas, um, and this is um, uh, basically everyone's favorite hedgehog and tortoise from a series that, um, a best-selling series that started with The Hug, um, are back with a message that Christmas is about being with the ones you love, and if that isn't a timeless holiday message, there never was one. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, these, these animals are so cute. Um, let me see if I can share these for, with you. Um, I mean, sure. and they're best friends, um, hedgehog and tortoise, um, but everybody gets in the act and they're worried about their presence and they're, you know, their decorations and their Christmas cards, but it's just really about hanging out together. Great and, illustrations. Yeah, I love it. And um, there's a nice stack at Warwick's. Um, and this is just a great little book for um, to read aloud to kids or just like a nice little um, stocking stuffer or um, hostess and host gift, you know, too. So yep, for sure. Yep. Really cute. Really great. Decor really great one. illustrations. Yeah. yeah, we love it. Okay, Tom. All right. So my last book I may have talked about in April, but I'm not, I'm not sure. It's called The Best Minds. The subtitle is A Story of Friendship, Madness, and the Tragedy of Good Intentions. And I'm talking about it now because, it, you know, it was published to incredible reviews. But then, you know, it's, we sold some copies and then the world moved on until the 10 best of the year list started showing up. And it's getting another life, thank goodness. So it's um, it was one of the New York Times top 10. So one of the five best nonfiction books of the year, according to the Times. And it is a fantastic book, but dark. And you have to prepare yourselves because it's about, so Jonathan Rosen, <clears throat> he's been working on this for like 10 years. It's the story of his friendship with um, Michael Lauder. They grew up together in New Rochelle. Michael Lauder was always, they were both smart kids, but Michael Lauder was the genius. Everyone knew all along, they both went to Yale. But Michael Michael Lauder, uh, while at Yale, or just before Yale, I think, he um, had a, he had parent, it was diagnosed with par paranoid schizophrenia and was hospitalized. He came out from the hospital and got into Yale Law School and he became a kind of a famous, person because he sold the rights to his memoir. He sold the film rights. Ron Howard was uh, supposed to direct. Uh, Brad Pitt was supposed to star. And then he had another psychotic break and he killed his girlfriend. So this is the story of a, you know, it's a story of a friendship. It's also the story of how we have treated mental illness and how we have thought about, talked about mental illness really for the last 50 years or longer. So it's a big, deep, d dark dive into this story that is, um, he's just an incredible writer and he's finally setting 
the record straight of their friendship as much as he can know about his friend Michael Lauder, who is still obviously still in prison. So it's a book that I think if you are interested in just great nonfiction or, you know, true crime, there is definitely that aspect. But it is a much uh, bigger, deeper kind of book than a true, I would call it a true crime book. But um, it's fantastic. I think if you liked Hidden Valley Road, Mm -hmm. um, the uh, looking further back, The Noonday Demon, these books that are about mental health and mental illness. You'll you'll also like this book. So, but it's it's so exciting to see it um, get all the attention that it deserved when we first published it. Yeah. And so, and, and also, it's a mixed blessing as a publisher when you get on this ten best list for a book you published in April. You don't have a lot of stock, but we have gotten the reprints going. There should be. I mean, I think Warwick's maybe in between reprints, but more is coming uh, this week, so it'll be out in stores in all those ten best New York Times displays um soon yeah so put an order in and we'll we'll yeah. make sure you get it at some point and it's, which... a, it's a big it's a big meeting oh book. is it yeah. yeah yeah that's a big one okay which reminds okay so the one that i want to talk about is our friend ann patchett when she was here i think i briefly talked about it last week she and she put this on her page too um she talked about this little gem called this is mm. happiness and this is, so we're out of stock too right now, sorry, but put an order in for it because I'm assuming we will get more soon because I think that it's just going to be, um, I can't imagine that it's not out there. I'm sure that's out, but this is one of those that you, my, my favorite thing, my Irish authors. So oh, yeah. I love, I love me, my Irish authors. Um, you need to slow down for this book. This is not a book to read to for like the plot, the story, the whole bit. This is a book you read in the in its quietness, and it's he writes the most beautiful sentences, and you just because at first I was reading it fast, 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 and I was like, oh no, I gotta slow down here. I right. mean, I need to really take a breath and slow down. And I mean, you read this, you come to the end. It's about time and place. I mean, because the whole thing is about this little village in the western part of um, Ireland that gets electricity in like the late 50s. And it's the story of this man who comes back with the electric, who's, who he is, this woman he left at the altar, you know, 50 mm -hmm. years ago. Is it, I mean, so it, it's, it's reconnections, it's family, it's, it's what happiness means. And it is just a gem. And I can't, I can't stop thinking about it. I wish we had a stack at the store because I would want all of you to read, but it's not really like that holiday, like fast paced reading. It's like, if, and when you get this, just take your time and enjoy. And he's got a okay. new book coming out next year. So I can't, I've never heard of him before. I haven't either. I feel like I should have, but Niall I know Williams. He's published by Bloomsbury. This is, he wrote, um, he was the, uh, he wrote a memoir. Um, I think he was longlisted for the, yeah, he was longlisted for the Booker for a book called um, History of the Rain, Four yeah. Letters of Love. Um, his, his writing is just incredible. And it's a, a little bookstore up in San Francisco area, and I apologize, I don't remember the name of it, recommended it to Anne Patchett, wrote Anne Patchett this letter, didn't even meet Anne, just wrote her this letter. And Anne gets, you know, a thousand of these things probably a day. And this happened to be one that she picked up and um, she said when she closed it, she reopened it, which she never rereads a book. And she said she reread this book. It was that it's that good. It's that Anne good. and Julie are recommending it. So we all. Yeah, need to. So that's it. You got two rec two recommendations there. <laughs> <laughs> From America's booksellers, Anne and Julie. Anne and Julie. There you go. I love it. But anyways, it's amazing. So. All right, everybody. We made it. I made it. You did, yes. <laughs> and I got all the books on there. I'm like so proud of myself right now. Okay, everybody have a great week of preparing and happy Hanukkah if you're celebrating still. And um, all we got Christmas stuff ready to buy and wrap and get all that stuff ready. So, um, Julia, when are you leaving on? Thanks, Dee. I hope I feel better too. Um, Julia, when are you leaving on your trip? Um, Friday. So I'm oh, taking it you're not going to be on tea time next week. I'm flying to Kona. Um, <laughs> and um, 
I probably won't, but we'll see. <laughs> oh my see god! Little... What's there to do on Kona, man? Just like <laughs> I know. If I want to come on and just make us all jealous, I mean, Andrew yeah, did that really. one time. Come from the bar, yeah. sit with a, sit on the beach with a good drink in your hand, and make us all jealous. I might, I might, I might take you up on that. Oh, love so it. we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm. Um, I, it's my 40th birthday, so we're love my it. friends and I are going to Hawaii. Yeah, fun, awesome. fun, fun. We'll have, have a great fun. trip. And thank, thank you, you. everything, Steve, Gabe, Andrea, Tom, Julia, thank you for coming in again this week. And um, everybody, happy reading. We will see you next time. Thank you.